Oh yeah. Ryan Schultz here from E39 Source. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing a DIY on wireless charging in a 20 year old car. I saw a video pop up on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. I watched it and I thought, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that. For sure, we're gonna do that. 20 year old car, wireless charging. So we're gonna be using that uh, center tray there right in front of the shifter. It holds an iPhone 11, uh, 11 Pro perfectly. Now that's not a Max version. The Max iPhones don't fit in there. So test fit your own phone to see if this is a remote possibility for you. You could add it somewhere else, but that's by far the best place. The 11 uh, with the silicone Apple case just fits in there flawlessly. It's not gonna move around or off the charging pad. It should be a really, really nice clean setup. So we're gonna talk about some parts you need, some tools you need and then we'll get into the DIY uh, but right there is where we're going to be mounting it. Now I've got some awesome friends and this is actually uh, Ted the blue bus guy uh, helped me out a lot here with the wiring. But the two things, first and foremost, we need are a wireless charging pad, not one from Walmart in a box that's meant to sit on your desk and looks all pretty. No, you just want the, the guts of these of, of the thing. And I'll put a link to these parts in the description below. This is an Amazon find. It was like less than $10 or something like that. So we have some basic circuitry. It's powered by a micro USB port and then two coils, uh, which would, if that were plugged in, I'd set the phone on there and it would start charging. Next up, we need a voltage regulator. All of the voltage inside the car is about 12 volts, maybe 13 with a running engine. And we need somewhere between five and nine. So this is a step down voltage regulator, another Amazon find. You can see some specs on there. Um, and Ted has actually been incredibly resourceful for me here in taking these two, two leads. So this is obviously the micro USB. So this lead is gonna plug into here, which will power the charger. Feeding the regulator, we need to tap 12 volts somewhere inside the car. And there's a million ways to do that. If you want to use a vampire tap and just rob power from the little pop-up cigarette door power outlet, that will work too. This is going to be a little bit cleaner. We're going to be running it to the eject box connector and plugging it in directly to a factory harness, totally plug and play. Uh, the eject box connector is going to be under the center console armrest. So we're going to be taking that out today and working with that. Um, I do have to finish pinning. The ground is already pinned because we know what number it is. I'm going to figure out what pin the positive is and then we'll just shove it in the connector and mount that in the eject box. Ted helped me here. All of this, this yellow and black wire, this connector, the connector, um, adapter that's going to snap into the under the armrest and then he put some pins some wires on the end of this This just came raw just cut wire ready to strip and be spliced in so he put a connector on there and another connector on here It's going to be beautiful all plug-and-play. So we're going to start in the car with removing the um, Center console armrest and I like to do that from the back seat back here. You either have cup holders like I do, or you have the cubby. If you have the cubby, that's a little bit easier. Just reach in there and, and kind of get a grip on it and then just pull it straight out. There's nothing else holding it in. With the cup holders, we have to very carefully open them, grab in the middle, say a quick prayer, pull, and hope they don't break. And they just pop out like this. So I'm gonna put those over here for safety. That allows this panel to drop down if you want, you can pull it and it will come out. Keep in mind it's still plugged in. We don't need to unplug it, let's just leave it here. And that exposes two black Phillips head screws. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver, we'll remove those screws, and that will allow us to pull back on the whole armrest and remove it from the console. With the screws out, I'm not kidding, just pick it up and move it over to the side, where we can now reveal the wiring in what we're calling the eject box. This area in here is the eject box. Now if you have a European center armrest, uh, that wiring is probably shoved down in its factory location. There's a million things I can say about this. If your car came with the phone, you might have a module or something in there that those wires are plugged into. If it didn't, and you're pre-wired for it, like my car is, the wiring isn't going to be exposed like this. I dug that out. The wiring will be shoved down in here somewhere, maybe zip tied to something. You'll probably have to remove the whole center console, which we'll get to uh, momentarily, um, and you'll have to dig it up. And it's, it's a two-part thing. It's even got this little clip in here that it seats into. You've got some sort of an antenna, and then you have this. I forget the X number connector on it, but it's a, is it an 18 pin or a 20 pin connector? And that's what we're gonna be plug and playing in for, uh, for our 12 volt source, or at least my 12 volt source. Uh, so now with that exposed, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the center console out. I've probably done that a million times on camera, but we'll make it a million and one so we can make this a all-inclusive video. 
Okay, we've moved on up to the front seat. We can already see two of the five screws that are holding the console in. So these two Phillips back here will need to come out. Then we can just take our shift boot here, kind of pinch it towards the center and pull up and that will come out. There's no need to remove the knob from the shift lever itself. That exposes two more. That one's missing because of course my trim is cracked there or my console, all, the, all this plastic inside the console gets very brittle, uh, but we're gonna have two more there. Then we can reach under here and poke up from the bottom. You might need to move some of this trim out of the way. And poke up the hazard light switch. That comes right out and reveals the fifth and final screw down there in the shadows. And that one's brass. All the other ones are black. Um, so we'll get those out and then we'll carefully be able to remove this whole thing. Keeping in mind, we will need to pop out, uh, just like we did with this, we'll need to pop out the central locking switch. And then there's gonna be one more connector if we peel back this shifter insulation. It might help to put it in sixth gear. Buy yourself some room. Peel that back and then the wiring harness that goes to this is actually clipped right there. And what we're going to want to do is take that and turn it counterclockwise about 45 degrees and then it frees itself like that. And then the console will lift out. And I'm forgetting, of course, finally there's one more electrical connector. It's going to be purple. When we get the console kind of up and lifted out of the way, this is illuminated in here when the lights are on in orange. And the connector for that is purple. We'll want to disconnect that as well. With the console trim lifted up out of the way, we can see the purple connector I'm talking about right here. It's just a two-piece. Don't pull it by the wires. Try to grab onto here and then here. Separate those and then we can put the console in a safe dry location. Console's out of the way. We can clean up some wiring or any mess in there if you want. Now's a great time for that. Next up we need to remove um, this tray. And this tray is kind of a pain to remove. We're going to start out by removing the cup holders. And if you press your cup holder open and then just hold it half open like that. Don't let it open all the way. Hold it halfway open and look in there and right here, again in the shadows, you will see the Phillips head screw, yet another one uh, that needs to come out. And there's another one just like that over here. So let's get those screws out of the way. The cup holders can be a bit tricky to remove because they've got this, this cover on top where the sticker is and that cover gets sandwiched back behind the lip of the hole where it came out from by your heated seat and, and other accessory buttons. And uh, if that is the case, then very carefully use kind of a flat, like a pry tool or a really thick, heavy piece of cardstock or something and go in there and, and, um, and, and just make it so it's not catching on that lip. So then we can pull the cup holders out. I just left the screws in there, stick them down on the floor. And now this buys us just enough room to reach up in here, feel the back of this button panel and push it forwards. And you wanna do that as straight as possible. Button panel slides out of the way. And on its single electrical connector, there's a brown part on the left with a small tab. And uh, it looks like there's a tab on the black part as well. So pinch both of the tabs together, wiggle the connector off. Boy, would that be easier with two hands. But I got it so we can move the button panel out of the way. And then we're gonna use either hole, whichever one works best, to reach up and do the same thing with the climate control or HVAC panel. Got my hand stuck in here now. And try to get that as straight as possible and, and wiggle it out. I am gonna need a second hand, but uh, you just push it out from the back. They're just held in spring tension. The HVAC panel pops out and, uh, and gives us a total of four different connectors. They're all different. Some normal BMW ones like this blue one, it's got a little tab right on the left side of, of the arm here. We press the tab down and swing the arm over. This is just so hard to do with one hand. Uh, with two hands, that's how it works. The little black one right here is the same deal. Over on the side, it's got two little pinches on each side, pinch them together and pull. And then this one I think is the easiest one and you just pull that straight up. After that comes out, I just took all the wires and shoved them back in there because nextly, we're gonna remove this, this frame, this metal piece of trim, bracket, frame, whatever you wanna call it that we just removed everything from. And there will be a total of four more Phillips head screws. We've got black ones in the top corner here the top corner here, a brass one down there, and another brass one down there. This area is getting messier and messier the more I work. Most of this is just dust and debris that's coming out of here. Uh, with those four screws removed, you just give it a good pull. It was a little bit harder, took a little bit more force the first time I did it. Um, I'm gonna replace this bracket with a little nicer one, but that can now go out of the way. 
And there's finally two more screws holding in this black tray, um, in addition to the wiring harness that we unclipped before from the center console. Obviously these wires will need to be disconnected right here before we can fully remove it. The two more screws, you guessed it, more Phillips heads. One here and one there. And it's a little bit tricky, you need kind of a short screwdriver to get in there. So I'll find one that works and, and show it to you in a moment. The stubby little craftsman worked perfectly to fit in there. If you don't have something like this, don't worry. You can use a long one. It's at kind of an angle. Just don't strip it by uh, being too aggressive with it. So with those screws out of the way now, the only thing that should be holding this thing in here will be the electrical connector, uh, which kind of goes underneath the center console black plastic trim a little bit. So I'm gonna disconnect it here and then carefully just slide the connector out and then we're gonna take this over to the workbench. Now comes probably the tricky and the annoying part. So we've got the tray outside of the car. I've got it in this orientation. And this is our wireless charging pad, which will need to be installed this way, coils down facing the bottom. And uh, it's gonna come up to a couple things. One, we need to kind of route the circuit board in a way that it's not gonna be too intrusive. And secondly, we can't put it over here if that's not where the phone's gonna sit. So we kind of need to do a couple test positions, see how the phone fits best in the tray, see how it charges best, if it's that way or if it's this way, up there or down here. Uh, I'm gonna get some blue painter's tape and just tape this thing on there and play with it, make sure we have a good connection um, before we do one or both of two things. It will work through this much plastic. I don't know how many millimeters of plastic this tray is. I don't have a bad one. I don't have one of these in inventory bad enough. I want to just cut in half and measure. Um, it will charge through that, but the less material wireless charging has to go through, um, the quicker it's going to charge. So if we can find a way to shave down, sand down some of this plastic, I initially thought a belt sander would work, but it's going to be too much heat and it's going to start melting it. So I, we probably need to use a Dremel and be very careful about um, shaving this area down if you want to do that. It'll just work a little bit better if we do. After about 10 minutes of playing, I think I've got this set up in a good way. Um, I figured out getting in and out of my car with my phone in my hand several times, I put my phone in backwards. I don't know, just the way I do it, I don't want to have to think about it. So the way I'm mounting Mounting um, the charger is going to look like this, and that's just how I am and in, in my idiosyncrasies and, and and how I work. So when I get in the car, I drop the phone in the tray, and it starts charging. How cool is that? So at this point, um, now I, I moved it around a whole bunch. I moved it up here in case I take a, a hard corner and it's still charging. I move it all the way down there as far as it goes. If I take a hard corner the other way, we're still charging. Um, I'm happy with the performance of that and the position. So now I'm gonna flip it back over and use a marker to just draw the outline of the pad so I know exactly where it needs to go. And then I guess I'm gonna decide if I wanna to try to thin the plastic in that area or not. And here's where we are next. I was able to take off not a lot, but a little bit of the plastic. Um, it is visibly, and uh, I can feel that it's thinner than over here. Um, trying to make it smooth. I don't have the best bit on a, on a drill uh, to use. It's kind of a sanding wheel I just put on there and went to town. It can't hurt to have it, to have it be a little bit thinner. So uh, now we're ready to glue the charging pad this way onto the bottom of the surface. I can still see my top line for adjustment there by design. And I picked up a hot glue gun on Amazon for all of $10, delivered the next day, and excuse my mess here on the workbench. But I'm just gonna kinda give it a lathering over the top like that. I'll probably do the same thing here. We're gonna line it up, um, keep a little bit of pressure on it for about five minutes while that glue dries, and then we'll be ready for installation. Welcome back guys, it's day two. I ran out of time yesterday. The camera battery needed to be charged. So uh, I've been working here this afternoon a little bit. Um, the, the hot glue gun's real easy to use. I've never used one before. You just shove one of the sticks back here, let it heat up for three to five minutes. With that on, the LED turns green, indicating that it's heating. Uh, about three trigger pulls is all I needed to go kind of around the coil. I put a little bit on the bottom of the tray, a little bit on the coil put it on there, I just used a liter of oil to hold it down for about 10 minutes, and uh, then it was all done. So let's talk a little bit about routing and wiring in the car using my method, which is that e-box connector and uh, the stuff from Ted. This is a really nice, neat, clean solution here. I'm very appreciative of, of Ted's help with this. So it turns out being that pin number 17 is your ground, and pin number eight is your switched 12 volt source. And uh, that's only switched in when the key's in position two or the engine is running. So that's probably good. You don't have to worry about leaving the phone in here and, and wearing down your vehicle battery. 
So I pinned that harness, I clipped it in. All of this is nice and tight in here. I have a little bit of extra wire that I coiled up. Uh, that when I put the center console back, of course, we won't see any of this. I pushed the, uh, the, the power wire down through this hole that comes out right there. I went underneath this um, duct work that goes to the rear vents. Make sure you stay away from your parking brake assembly. Of course, that's mechanical and you don't want to catch that. The power converter or voltage regulator is just right here. It actually seats really well in between the center console and the rear climate control. It's also kind of sandwiched underneath this metal cross brace or support. And uh, then the wires just go up underneath all of this. Everything's out of the way and it's not going to catch any of the shifter linkage. Um, I've already put this stuff back together while the battery charged late this morning. Everything in here is really dirty. I apologize for that. It's going to get cleaned up here when I'm done um, shortly. And then I actually ran the little circuit board. There's just enough of a space. You can kind of see the circuit board here. Um, it's, I'm not going to mess with it too much because it's situated um, in there in a way that will allow it to vent and cool itself. If we use this for a while, it won't, uh, shouldn't, at least overheat. And also in a way that the USB power connector isn't going to inadvertently pull out and... Um, and stop the whole thing from working. So at this point, you can lay your tray back in here. Make sure you kick the, the little clear wire for this electrical power. It's actually caught right now on its own wire, so I'll fix that in a moment. Uh, but we're gonna run that out so it can plug back into the vehicle harness. Then I started with the cup holders, put them back in, put this one back in, finally connected everything on the HVAC panel and pushed that back into place. So at this point, we can just reassemble everything uh, the opposite of how we took it apart. All right guys, we are done, cleaned up, put back together. It takes about 10 minutes to get everything put back together. And uh, let's give this thing a final test. I've got the engine running here, just charging the battery. I'm gonna stick my phone in here as I usually do and focus and it is charging. So I notice um, a couple, the only anomaly actually, is when you first put it in here, it needs to be about a finger's width away from, from this little lip. And as long as that's the case, then once it starts charging, you can move it around and it will continue charging. Uh, but if you initially stick it all the way over there, it doesn't want to start. So um, other than that, we've got a great setup here. And um, jury's out on how quickly it charges. Stay tuned for the next update on this car and I'll be sure to mention that. But. So far, so good. I think the biggest difference you guys will see if you attempt this on your own car will be just uh, just how you want to wire it. If you don't have access to the connector to uh, to use the eject box like that, that's a really neat, clean, easy way to do it. Once you figure out what pins, at least, are your uh, are your positive and ground, and and just use a voltmeter for that. I was able to probe the contact. The only one with a constant 12 volts um, for me was pin number eight, and then for the ground, I put it in ohms mode. I ground to the chassis over here using this bolt for the door latch, and then see which one has uh, has zero or uh, you don't want an open line on that obviously your ground will will read zero ohms so if you want to use a normal method um, vampire taps or splicing anything else works otherwise the eject box is nice and clean other than that it is tight fitting the circuit board in there uh, with the plastic that's directly under the tray uh, but if you if you work with it a little bit you can you can unpeel some of the copper coil a little bit to buy yourself some extra wire uh, but it's very doable. It just takes a couple hours of fiddling with. So there we go. 20-year-old car. I'll say it again with wireless charging. As I said years ago, these things are getting nice. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments, questions down below. Feel free to email me, ryan at e39source.com. We'll talk in the next e39source video. Take care.